open this meeting uh, of Thurston County Joint Planning Session with our brethren over in Tumwater. So appreciate you guys. I'm glad to see you here. Um, and we're opening the meeting at 6.30ish. Uh, so let's start out with introductions of the planning commissions. We'll go through the uh, our Thurston County group first. And uh, how about Donna? Would you introduce yourself, please? You're gonna have to take yourself off from mute or maybe I can do it. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Donna Nickerson in, in, in district number three. Okay, uh, Eric. Uh, I'm Eric Casino, District 2, and I live uh, in unincorporated Thurston County off of Long Lake. Don? Don DeHan, District 1, and I live down in Southeast Olympia, just outside of the city limits. Ed? Uh, Ed Fleischer, District 2. I live just, just outside of Lacey in the county off uh, up by Nisqually. And Doug? Doug Carmen, District 2. I live in the Lacey Urban Growth Area on the southwest end of Long Lake. And my name is Jim Simmons. I'm in District 3 out towards Steamboat Island. So there's, or tomorrow, excuse me. Uh, let's go around the room for you guys. Uh, I have Elizabeth. Hi, uh, I'm Elizabeth Robbins. I'm, uh, uh, I live in Tumwater. I've been on the Planning Commission for a little over a year now and uh, recently retired from uh, the State Department of Transportation. Glad to be here. Great, welcome. Uh, Michael. Michael Tobias. I've been on the Sunwater Planning Commission since uh, 2018. I uh, currently am a resident in, uh, at the base of Barnes Hill, uh, near the crossroad of uh, Crosby and Barnes. Thank you. Uh, Brad? I'm Brad Medrud. I'm the planning manager for the city of Tumwater. Welcome. Uh, Nam. Hi, I'm Nam Nguyen. I've been on the Tumwater Planning Commission for about three years now. Um, of course, I live in Tumwater. I, uh, I work for the Attorney General Office. Great. Uh, Nathan. Uh, hi, my name is Nate Peters. I also live in Tumwater. And so I just joined the uh, Planning Commission back in January, I believe. And so it has been a fun ride. And it's nice to meet all of you. So thank you. Welcome. Uh, Leah. I'm Leah Davis. I'm the associate planner with Thurston County Community Planning. And Joel. I'm Joel Hansen. Uh, I was annexed into the city of Tumwater in 2016 and joined the planning commission at that time. Welcome, Joel. And for Thurston County commissioners, our staff that are represented today are Maya Tiefel, Jennifer Davis and Polly Stoker. Yeah, and Leah as well. So Leah Davis is um, maybe a new face to our planning commission. Okay, I think I'm she's presented to you. So, so this will be her kind of first entree into our world and she gets to have all of you at the same time. So um, thanks for being here, Leah. Thanks, Leah. I apologize too for I did not. So, okay, so we're going to open this up for public communications. If there's anybody out there that would like to speak, please raise your hand. And if you are familiar, or if not, we have three minutes and Polly will have the timer up there. And it goes from green to yellow. And when it goes to yellow, you have 30 seconds approximately. And then when it goes to red, I ask you to wrap up at that point. So three minutes of fame. Uh, right now I have uh, Charlotte Persons. Not sure. Are you there, Charlotte? Oh, she took her hand down. Uh, anybody else? Um, oh, now it's back. I don't. There you go. Go ahead, Charlotte, could you unmute yourself?
Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's me. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Yep. Great. Okay. Nice to, nice to finally be able to talk to you. Okay. I was looking at the um, proposal before you tonight, and I see that you are you have uh, an extension for the airport hazard zone is one of the things that's been requested. And it doesn't require any zoning right now, but there's a, a number of things that cannot be built in the path of the airplanes. Can you tell me where I could find more information about what can and cannot be in the airport hazard zone? Because I couldn't find a reference to what to look for, for more information. Maybe you'll cover that later tonight in the presentation. And then um, what kind of assessment has to be done before they make the decision to do this kind of extension? Because it seems like there might be a number of businesses that have to move or, or close. And it'd be interesting to know what are the requirements and you know what can, if a business is already there, can they change their windows or something? Maybe that would be helpful. And um, is there go is this like a preparation so that there can be a, z a zoning change request in the future? Like they're going to extend the runways. So you just a I have a lot of questions. I hope you can answer in the presentation and maybe in the course of the meeting. Okay. Thanks, Charlotte. We will we'll look out for those. And if nothing else, uh, after the meeting, you can contact staff either at Thurston, Thurston County or Tumwater, and I'm they, I'm sure they would be glad to figure out and help you out on that. Great, thank you. Um, anybody else out there that would like to speak today? Uh, Chrissy. Can you guys hear me? You can? Yes, go ahead, Chrissy. Oh, sorry, I couldn't, couldn't tell if you could hear me or not. No worries. Um, good evening. I wanted to address uh, the, the topic for this evening, and I too, like the previous caller, have some concerns about the um, airport extension. Um, and actually, overall, the entire land use proposals that would incorporate the airport. Having myself lived under SeaTac Airport's flight pattern for half my life, um, I can appreciate that any changes to the airport extending a runway um, will impact not only this side of the county of Tumwater, but will also impact really the entire county. As more planes come in, um, that you're gonna have a lot more traffic and a lot more noise. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, I live in the Delphi Valley. I already get a few airplanes flying over me um, quite frequently. I also wanted to comment too, to make sure that for this kind of, of land use changes that we've got environmental impact statements and all the applicable studies that should be done with the magnitude of a, a new land use um, to this level. So that was, that was my main concerns. Um, again, looking at an airport and concern that we do not become Everett, that this airport along with what's happening on the corridor with all of the um, warehouses that are going in place, industrial warehouses, I, I see a pattern. I, I see a goal of creating a transportation network that is substantial and have a grave concern that, you know, we're gonna look like pain field. And that is personally not my hope for Thurston County and, and what we are and what we become. So. With that, thank you very much. Thanks, Christy. Is there anybody else that would like to share? I'm not seeing any more hands going once, going twice.
going through times. Okay, so we're moving on. Um, I am going to turn this over to staff of Leah Davis and Brad Medder. So there you go, guys. All right, Leah, do, would you like me to start? Would you please? All right, thank you both, uh, both commissions for having us tonight. Uh, uh, I remember coming in 2017 when we actually could meet in person and we had a similar briefing uh, when we started this joint plan amendment process. Um, unfortunately, some of your staff have moved from the commission to the staff, so they have a good memory of exactly what we talked about. Uh, I will try to touch on some of the questions that those in the audience had raised. I think those are valid concerns. Um, and I also encourage them at the end of our presentation, we have our contact information. Uh, if they'd like to reach out to either myself or Leah, uh, we can provide some additional information. Uh, hopefully they'll answer some of the questions that they have. Uh, I will go ahead and share a presentation that I prepared. And if it's all right with any of the commission, and this is up to the chairs, uh, I'm fine with being interrupted if you have specific questions or if you would like to wait until after the presentation, that's fine as well. Okay. So the intent of this briefing tonight with both the commissions is to present uh, the update to the joint plan, which is the document that covers the unincorporated portion of the urban growth area for the city of Tumwater. Uh, it's under the regulations and policies of the county, and the intent of that area is ultimately that it would become an area that could be potentially annexed by the city in the future. Uh, we'll touch on the purpose of the plan. We'll talk a little bit about what the urban growth area looks like now versus what it looked like back in 1995 when this plan was first approved. Uh, we'll provide a summary of some of the proposed updates for the joint plan. And we'll start a discussion of the implementation measures and some of the next steps uh, going forward in the process. The intent of the joint plan is to be an element of both the city and county comprehensive plans. And by that, it's sort of a mini version of the comprehensive plans for both areas covering land use and transportation and so forth. And it really is there to guide the future growth of this area as it is a transition between current rural state to eventual urban state. Uh, the joint plan, as I mentioned, was last substantially updated about 25 years ago when it was first adopted in 1995 after a very extensive process. Uh, the city completed our last required GMA update in 2016. Uh, we've had subsequent annual amendments since that point. And the objective here is to update and amend the joint plan to reflect current conditions on the ground, as well as changes in the urban growth area, as well as amendments that have been made in the subsequent 25 years to both the city and county comprehensive plans. Uh, the uh, intent is really, the joint plan is our framework for guiding future development in the urban growth area. Uh, we also call it the, the joint plan area. So if I go back and forth, that's what they're both the same thing. As I mentioned from its transition from rural to urban level development, uh, the joint plan serves as the basis for future planning decisions by each jurisdiction in the urban growth area. Uh, that means we're capital facilities, investments, um, things that are needed to be done in terms of policies and actions outside of say development regulations, uh, all those kinds of things come into play here. And in turn, the joint plan provides that policy framework for the development regulations in the joint plan area. And that is the Thurston County Code Title 22, Tumwater Urban Growth Area Zoning. Uh, so really it's sort of the foundation document for what is done within the area and what the area is proposed to look like after 20 years. A Little bit of background about the joint planning effort. Uh, the cities of Lacey, Olympia, and Tumwater, as well as the county, have been jointly planning in their shared urban growth areas since 1988. Uh, so it's not a new concept, and it's definitely something that was really pioneered in the state of Washington here in Thurston County. The idea that the recognition that there are going to be areas of that are maybe currently county, but over time are going to be evolving and changing and becoming much more urban, and ultimately will be annexed and incorporated within the, the cities of the county. And there's a need to really recognize and plan for those kinds of things. The Growth Management Act 
once it was passed in the 90, requires countywide planning policies that call for joint planning and a process for modifying the urban growth boundaries as needed. Um, as I mentioned, the joint plan was adopted in 1995 to meet the intent of those countywide planning policies. Uh, there have been some minor amendments to the joint plan made in 2009, but this is really the first substantial update of the plan since that time. For your reference, the current growth area of the city is shown in the map uh, on your screen. The area in green is the area that is currently incorporated city of Tumwater. The area that you see surrounding it, like for example, alongside the uh, east bank of the Black Lake in Tan and those areas in Tan on the south are the urban growth area for the city. So those areas are currently under county jurisdiction the intent is over time that those areas would develop and probably be annexed by the city. So we're looking at areas that are su substantial outside the, the city. We're also looking at 12 islands of county area that's within the boundaries entirely of the city. Uh, in fact, there's some sm too small to actually be seen on the map. In 1995, our, the city's urban growth area was about 8,253 acres. Since that time, and now we're down to 28, uh, 282 acres, and that's mostly courtesy of uh, annexations, as well as there was a uh, substantial reduction in the size of the urban growth area uh, in the area around Little Rock and 93rd because of substantial flooding. Uh, that really doesn't lend itself to urban level development. It's not appropriate for that. So it was taken out of the urban growth area. The key thing here to understand is we're now planning for a much smaller area than was originally planned. Uh, we still have a lot of the issues that remained from 1995 um, that are still important, uh, but we're a little more focused, I think, in terms of what the planning area is now. As I mentioned, we, the city had started our required comprehensive plan update in 2015 and completed it in 2016. And the city and county had started work on an update to the joint plan in 2016 and 2017. Uh, for a variety of reasons, that work was pushed aside. And we restarted this discussion with staff at the county in 2020 with the intent of adopting an update in 2021. The primary goals of the update are to, again, address current community interests, align the goals and policies of the city with those in the joint plan and to meet current state requirements. Our process for doing this is that we will have the planning commissions jointly review drafts of the joint plan together, uh, have discussions together and, and try to come to agreement together on particular aspects. Um, we will have uh, our proposal from staff is that we will have a joint work session uh, in March, which we're doing now, uh, one in April for further discussions on implementation. And then we would schedule a joint hearing time likely to be in May of, of this year. Once the commissions issue a recommendation, that recommendation will go to the Tumwater City Council who will review the recommendation and they will agree to a, uh, their own recommendation to send to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the City Council will not adopt the plan until the Board of Commissioners does because this is ultimately a county document. So the process we're looking at for the, our City Council will probably be in June and July. And then it will go to the Board of County Commissioners for their review and then their formal adoption of the joint plan update. Once they do that, uh, as part of our annual comp plan update process at the city, we will incorporate that in, and add that to that particular update cycle. After we finish our work on the joint plan and it's approved by the Board of Commissioners, we'll start working on implementing actions, which include some updates to the Thurston County Title 22 for consistency with the Tumwater Municipal Code. Our concerns are primarily in land use, and that's really sort of outlined by the memorandum of great understanding that governs this whole process. Um, and we've included some of the items in our implementation schedule in the joint plan. So you have an idea of the kind of issues and things that we're looking at. For our community outreach process, uh, Growth Management Act requires early and continual citizen participation 
in the development and updates of local comprehensive plans. We would like to have the planning commissions as well as the city council and the board of commissioners serve as the primary means for community, obtaining community input on this update. If the commissions feel that we need to have other meetings or do other things, we definitely as staff are open to those things, uh, but we will need some time to figure out what, how to do that in, in the COVID area and how to reach, as you saw, those pretty different and disparate areas that make up the joint plan area. Uh, but if that isn't a concern, then definitely share that with staff. To give you an idea of what we anticipate to happen within the urban growth area, I have our 2020 population forecast here. The first line is only the city of Tumwater, within the city of Tumwater. Uh, we have a population as of uh, April of last year of 24,600. We're anticipating to grow to 35,930. That doesn't include any potential annexations. That's just within the existing boundaries as they are today. Within the urban growth area, we have a current population as of April 2020 of 3,330. We're anticipating that to probably almost triple uh, to 9,020 uh, because that there's a substantial amount of underdeveloped uh, lands in those areas that I'll touch on the sort of the zoning, what we anticipate in those areas. So all these together mean that we're looking at a total population of about 44,950 by 2040 in these two areas together. Demographics, this is just a quick, just to give you an idea obviously of, of what that population may look like in the future. Um, kind of no surprise, it will be older, uh, but in an interesting way. Uh, the over 80 group will be much, will be increasing a, a bit more than, uh, than currently. And then the younger generations, the under 40s, will be declining relative to the other population size. So for our planning efforts, we also realize that we need to be focused on the needs of that kind of population, an older population, uh, while at the same time understanding that given that we have an overall growth in population, uh, there'll still be the need for schools and other things as part of that development. This is a list of the current comprehensive plan, joint plan, land use designations in the, uh, the joint plan area. And it's really intended to give you an idea of the relative size of the various designations and why that drives the population and, and what kind of employment growth you could see. The largest area by far is our single family low, which is four to seven dwelling units per acre. It's just a shy under 1,200 acres. Uh, another, you know, equally large area for our single family medium, which is our slightly denser single family zone. And then our multifamily medium, which is our very low, in my mind, low density multifamily zone. The uh, residential sensitive resource, uh, we'll talk about that when we, there's some examples of that. Those are for, that is intended for areas that have critical area issues uh, that probably cannot support a level of density uh, above four dwelling units an acre, uh, but could be served by urban services. The other land uses um, are fairly small in, in comparison, with the exception of the light industrial land use, which is about 566 acres. And that is concentrated primarily around the 93rd interchange and just south of the airport. Uh, we have very small areas of heavy industry, uh, parks and open space. Parks and open space are typically those areas um, that either A, are already designated as parks. Uh, there's a, the county park on Black Lake, for example, or areas that are really critical areas that aren't gonna be developing uh, period because of the level of critical areas on those sites. And finally, a quick discussion, the utility designation exists in as a land use, but not as a zoning, uh, zoning district. The utilities is basically covers the BP lines that cross both the city and the county. Uh, so if you're curious about that. In terms of the residential supply versus demand between 2020 and 2040, as of 2020, we have about 1,200, 150 
uh, dwelling units in both the city and the urban growth area. Uh, the data we have here is from TRPC and is from their draft buildable lands report, which is expected to come out as the final report later this year. So these numbers may change slightly, but probably not very much. We don't have a way of pulling out just the urban growth area yet, uh, but when we do, we'll include that. We're expecting both the city and the UGA to um, need to have or grow to about 20,000 dwelling units, 820 acre uh, total dwelling units in 2040. And so that means our future demand uh, is going to be 8,670. Our supply exceeds that. So we're in good shape there. Our, our supply, based on our zoning, is about 10,800. So we have an excess capacity of about 20%, which is more than enough uh, to cover the uh, residential demand within that area. Uh, that's important, and I will share right now why that's important. As I mentioned, the draft buildable lands report noted that the urban areas in the county, which are the cities plus all of the unincorporated urban growth areas, that's not only for Tumwater, but also Lacey, Olympia, and Yelm, uh, contain sufficient land to accommodate projected population growth. So from the residential capacity standpoint, we're in good shape. That means we do not need to make any changes to up zone to add additional uh, residential zoning in order to accommodate the expected population. Uh, that is a good thing. And so related to that, and I'm gonna, oops, apologies. That's what happens when I get. Hey Brad, can I just jump in there for a second? Yes, we have please. a question from uh, Michael. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. I saw you had your hand up. Actually, my question was going to be about um, if upzoning would be required, and Brad just answered it. So, uh, thanks, though. Oops. So, uh, as with everything, some caveats, uh, but I do not think that these are rise to the level to, to challenge the need to not do anything, I guess. One, as you're aware, we have federally endangered species in the county and the city, especially in this particular area. Uh, we have the Olympia pocket gopher, uh, that is a primary species here. Uh, we do not know necessarily the effects of that over time. Uh, we're, I know the county has issued a draft of their HCP and is currently going through uh, NEPA and SEPA review. Uh, the city is also in the process of preparing a habitat conservation plan to address this. Uh, we expect to have that issued for public comment this year. Um, but it's a wild card and we'll need to see, make sure the, the issue for the HCPs is we need sufficient land uh, to mitigate the effects of any development or other disturbance to the habitat. Uh, and given the small size of the Olympia pocket gopher in this particular area that basically covers the southern two thirds of the city and that northern band of the, ur the urban growth area and that portion of the county, we have a fairly limited area in which to find mitigation area. Another issue to remember is there's the availability of water, uh, not only from uh, if you're going to pull from municipal source, but if you're going to pull from well sources. And then finally, <clears throat> while it's not necessarily uh, as, a as a identified as a, as a serious issue in some areas of the UGAs and counties uh, outside of this, our UGA, there is the difficulty and the expense of extending sewer service to some of the areas in the urban growth area. And I would say that the, the area around Black Lake is probably not in terms of difficulty getting there, it's just expense of getting there. Um, so that also probably should be kept in mind. The another element, and excuse me, I want to also quickly say that based on the information from the draft buildable lands report, there's also more than sufficient commercial and more than sufficient industrial lands uh, in, in the area and within the city uh, that we're not concerned with making sure that we, uh, we need to add additional areas for either industry or, or commercial in order to meet demand. 
Switching gears, the land use policies in the joint plan are the largest section of the plan, and they cover uh, the goals and policies that really establish the direction of future growth within the joint plan area. In your staff report, uh, we provided as an appendix all of the, the policies that we are that are existing or proposed, and you can see the proposed changes in the marked up copy of the joint plan document. The goals and policies are really intended to ensure that we have coordination with other city and county uh, plan elements, regional plans, and other countywide planning policies. And also the goals and policies really serve as the basis for defining the action plan for implementing the joint plan recommendations found in chapter 11 implementation of the plan. The implementation chapter in the proposed updated plan is probably it's well, it's definitely larger, but it's much more comprehensive in terms of here are the things we think we need to do in order to really put the plan into action. So it's not merely a, a sits on the shelf, we come back in 25 years and do it all over again. Uh, it's intended to say here are some actions we should be undertaking during that time to make sure that what we say in the joint plan is actually occurring on the ground. Brad, I had a question, Ed Fleischer. Sure. Uh, Back on the, uh, the, the, your couple of slides ago about sewer, how much of the uh, Tumwater urban growth area is served by sewer now? Is any of it served by sewer? Or? I don't believe any of it is. Um, I believe there are a couple of developments that are in process right now uh, being reviewed by county staff in the urban growth area near Little Rock uh, that may be served by sewer if they're approved and built. Uh, but we do not currently have any sewer service that I'm aware of that goes outside of the city limits. Okay, thanks. Okay. I just want to touch on the larger land use goals that are in the plan so everybody has a general familiarity with them. I'm not going to read through each of them, but I'll touch on some of the, the important points in that. Uh, Goal number one is to ensure really that the joint plan is implemented and coordinated with all the applicable city and county plans and regulations, uh, meaning that it's brought up to date with all the things that have happened in the past 25 years, the changes on the ground, as well as changes in policy. The second goal is to ensure that development occurs in an orderly and cost efficient manner. Uh, that's, you know, we limited resources on the government side and the, the, the importance of meeting the goals of accommodating the growing population in the most efficient fashion really means that we need to be focusing on how do we best utilize land and public service services, how do we preserve open space, and how do we re reduce sprawl for a variety of reasons. Um, I'll cite the recently adopted or recently accepted uh, Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan, which included a lot of actions <clears throat> that encourage concentrated development within the city, uh, reduction of sprawl, and all of those things for all the good reasons on the planning side, but also for good reasons on the environmental side. Goal three is to ensure that there are adequate public services, facilities, and public owned utilities available for proposed and existing development. So for example, that development that I spoke about on Little Rock Road, it is, the, as part of that development, the developer is going to have to extend sewer to that property in order to develop at urban level densities. They're also gonna be extending water. They're also gonna be doing, having utility extensions of other sorts and that kind of thing. The purpose of the joint plan is to recognize uh, that we need to allow for and plan for those kinds of things to occur. Excuse me, Brad, just Don DeHaan, a question. Sure. When it says publicly owned utilities, does that exclude any privately owned utilities? And, and I don't know what they might be, but does it? It, it in my mind, it shouldn't because, you know, to be, we have to be able to allow for a PSE providing uh, electricity and or gas service or other utility services that aren't a publicly owned utility to, to provide service. Uh, it, so I think the intent here is to say, to the utilities in the broad sense and public services in the broad sense, excuse me. <clears throat> so, so not necessarily public owned utilities, but just utilities. Correct. This isn't assuming that, you know, the Thurston County or Tumwater will be forming its own public utility. 
Uh, I haven't heard that yet expressed as an idea. I probably want to keep it away from some members of the council, but um, I think, yeah, it's really just whomever is best to do so should be, we should make sure that they have, we're not putting obstacles in the way of them doing so. Um, number four, encourage land use patterns that will increase the availability of affordable housing for all economic segments of the city of Tumwater population and the UGA population. This is uh, very important right now for Tumwater as well as Olympia and Lacey. We're all going through a process of developing our own uh, housing action plans where the focus really is how do we create more housing in the cities to meet the expected population growth? And more importantly, how do we create affordable housing for all groups in the city? And that has obviously been, an, it was an issue before COVID. I think it will be an issue afterwards, uh, but I think it's an important thing to keep in mind when we're, we're talking about development and so forth here in, in the UGA. Right in a row, one more question. Uh, do you have a definition for affordable housing? Yes, so thank you for that. There, there, in my mind, there are a couple kinds of affordable housing. There's, there is the uh, HUD definition, which in the city, we use the 80% of household median income and less as affordable. If you're able to uh, afford housing in those income levels, that, is, that means it's affordable. What we have found from our studies and our work is that for the most part, uh, it's difficult if you are 80% and under, and that's a fairly substantial portion of our uh, population. Uh, so that means either that we need to be looking for uh, incentives to you know, or uh, ways to make it easier for them to afford uh, housing, either by increasing the overall amount of housing or providing specific subsidies to, to allow for that. Uh, the issue for in my mind is if we don't provide those kinds of, of things, we, we have a risk of basically starting to uh, send a lot of those, uh, those parts of the population outside of the city farther away and the commutes are longer and all of the other things that, the, the not good things that come from that, lo loss of time for other activities, uh, climate change, all those kinds of things that feed into uh, when, you, when you force people to live farther away from jobs and commercial and all that kind of thing, not by choice. Uh, related to that, uh, ensuring development patterns that encourage efficient multimodal transportation systems that are coordinated with the larger regional Thurston and Tumwater transportation plans is an important element of this. I recognize in the UGA that we really aren't set up for uh, transit service like inner city transit. I think we're outside of that area. Uh, but in the past, it had been part, and it, I wouldn't be surprised at some point it comes back in. Uh, the more we allow and prepare for development patterns that support that, uh, the better off we'll be when we have when we expand and switch on on transit and that kind of thing. Number six, reducing impacts from flooding, encouraging efficient stormwater management, and protecting and preserving the city's groundwater as well as the groundwater for those who are drawing directly from wells on their property. This is very important in the southern portion of the UGA. Uh, it is an area that has, uh, during the winter, uh, high groundwater flooding uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, so it's, it's, this is a bigger issue than perhaps in other areas of the county. Also, our wells are concentrated. We have a uh, concentration of wells near the airport, as well as some uh, just off of 93rd on the west side of the freeway. So our well field draw area covers a lot of this area as well. So it's a concern whether or not this area is within the city or not, how it affects our, our, our water and the water that's uh, going to our residents. Uh, some other goals are encouraging retention of open space, allowing for parks and trails and development of recreational opportunities. Um, related to that, observing the physical limitations of the land during development. Uh, that means, you know, don't build, don't build excessively on steep slopes, uh, try to avoid impacting uh, the wetlands and so forth and creating issues down the road. Um, nine is sort of a create and protect, which is in my mind, uh, for vibrant residential areas. The, the idea here is we have existing residential areas in the UGA, 
as much as we can, we want to protect and ensure that those areas continue to be good areas for people to live and to recreate and all those kinds of things, even as change is occurring around them. Uh, creating and protecting active commercial and industrial areas. Uh, there's definitely those areas out in the county. Uh, we want to preserve those, number one, job-based, number two, economic growth, all of those things, services. Uh, it's important to do that. Number 11, promoting energy efficiency and new development. Uh, that is a big issue. Uh, it's a, it's a, one of those issues that it, the increased energy efficiency supports things like climate mitigation plans. It also causes havoc sometimes with affordable housing because there's a cost associated with it. Uh, long term, it's probably a good goal. In the short term, we need to figure out ways to sort of mitigate the impacts for some of that. And then finally, uh, protect the preservation of sites of historic and cultural significance. Uh, there, these areas are uh, also tribal land or concerns for the tribal areas. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind. And then finally, protect the regional airport for incompatible land use that could affect present and future use of the airport facilities and operations. And that gets starts to get at some of the questions that some of the uh, people asked at the beginning of the session. And I think we can address that as, as we go through. Uh, it is a, it's a, Interesting transition uh, when you have an active airport and a growing uh, urban area, that there will be conflicts and there are ways to try to address that. Any questions about the policies or anything else that I've talked about so far? Okay. As I mentioned, we're not oh, proposing- I, could, oh. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get myself unmuted quickly enough. I am wondering back on uh, you remuted yourself, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, uh, is the chart where you have the um, the changes uh, between twenty twenty uh, and the? It's actually slide twelve. Okay, um, and I'm wondering. Uh, I mean, I, I think you you verbalized this that um, we're not expecting to see the amount of demand uh, that's going to over overtake our supply of housing. But it would be good to know uh, maybe an additional column here, or, you know, eventually in the in the joint plan itself, where we expect change from current land use designations. Um, and, and, you know, just kind of the, the, the magnitude of it, uh, uh, if, if that's possible. So you, you get a sense all in one graphic uh, about, you know, it's either uh, not consequential or, you know, here's where it's mostly going to be and not over here, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know if that's possible, but, uh, but you know, kind of add a column and say our current acreage for um, single family uh, low is the nearly 1,200. And it's expected to be X, which might be a lot or, or not a lot um, of change. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that would be helpful to to help show what we're what we're planning for. Okay, thank you. I'll I'll make a note of that then. Thank you. And thank you. This also brings up uh, an important transition note as we start to talk about specific map amendments related to the whole question about land capacity for residential, commercial, and industrial uh, uses within the joint plan area. Because we anticipate we will have sufficient capacity for all three of those things over the next 20 years of the plan, we do not think that it's necessary to reduce, uh, increase the size of the urban growth area. That's, a, that's an important point because it'll come up again when the county is looking at their update uh, countywide. Um, Based on the draft uh, buildable lands report, there is sufficient capacity within the city's urban growth area, the city and the urban growth area for future growth, which means that we do not have a justification for expanding the urban growth area. And to be honest, we don't have an interest in expanding the urban growth area. Very important point. Um, however, within the existing urban growth area, uh, there are some uh, proposed amendments that have come out of uh, land use planning exercises the city has undertaken, as well as some changes uh, that have occurred since the last joint plan update was completed. 
And I want to sort of walk you through a little bit about what the future land use designations look like, first of all, within the city, so you get a little better understanding of what we're talking about. This is a map that shows the joint plan future land uses as proposed. This is not the current map, so it, it reflects the amendments that we will be talking about. But as you can see, those areas that are in yellow, these are single family uh, low, and you can see why it's by far the biggest zone or land use designation within the area. The lighter color here, this RSR, I'm circling an area that's uh, between 86th and 93rd. This really reflects a high groundwater situation uh, in the urban growth area. So when we have heavy winter rains over time, that groundwater, which has no place to go, comes up and causes flooding. And that's why in this particular area, uh, we have an RSR zone, so we don't put excessive amounts of people and other things in a place that we know is going to have issues. Uh, other things to watch and look for, the gray areas are the light industrial zones. So along 93rd, next to the airport, along the freeway, uh, those are intended for things like warehousing, um, other, other kinds of light manufacturing, not heavy manufacturing. As I mentioned, this purple is the corridor for the BP utility lines. So you see it crosses here, enters the city, and then crosses the large island in the middle of the city. Uh, green is the parks and open space areas and so forth. You see very limited commercial, uh, and that's really kind of the function of what the community, how it's already developed to begin with. There are some areas anticipated for future commercial growth. This is the red area and the mixed use area, which is residential and commercial, uh, but not really that much. In terms of the original breakout of the joint plan, there were three sub areas, uh, Eastern, Southern and Western. Uh, because of annexations and other reasons, the eastern area is really down to just two very small islands, and they're in red. The area in orange is the southern land use area, and the area in blue is the western. <coughs> These don't necessarily reflect, in my mind, actual neighborhood divisions. It's more of a division of ways to talk about the urban growth area in the plan. Uh, I don't think they reflect um, actual conditions down there that said the Western is dramatically different from the Southern. I think it was just a way of making it easier to evaluate the data. So when I spoke of the Eastern sub area, I said we only have two areas of the county that are still part of that. And you'll notice that, excuse me, three technically, uh, one parcel here, uh, two parcels immediately south of that on an urban area, just south of North Street, and then a uh, residential island uh, also down here. Uh, the total area, I think, of all of these together is maybe an acre, probably slightly less. At the same time we're doing the joint planning process, there is also a discussion between the county and the city about addressing these island uh, areas within that are completely surrounded by the city. Uh, there's a state law that was passed a couple of years ago that allows for a process of if the county and the city come to an agreement that these areas can be annexed into the city at one time rather than individually annexed. It really recognizes that for most of these areas and excuse me for all of these areas the services that are provided on the emergency side uh, especially in these areas in the west are provided by the city. Uh, the, the fire district that served this area is, is defunct. Uh, it basically falls on the city uh, to provide emergency services and police services as needed to these areas. As that process evolves, I'll try to update you on that. We're really at the very beginning of discussions of how that would look. Um, so I don't have a timeline yet of, of what that would look like. This is a, the joint plan southern sub area as proposed by the joint plan. So it includes some areas that have changed or we're proposing to change. Uh, as I mentioned, the RSR area reflects the high groundwater. Uh, light industrial reflects the uh, 
nearness to the airport industrial areas. Um, and then off here on the corner on this is old 99, there is a very small island of uh, neighborhood commercial. And that is sort of a, a commercial hub intended to serve the surrounding, the immediate surrounding areas. We'll touch on what that means in, in future slide. And then finally, here's the Western uh, sub area. And as you can see, it covers the area on the east bank of Black Lake. Uh, it includes the park, it includes uh, other things up there. And this heavy area, this is the heavy industry, and this is light industry. It's right next to the, the, the mine off of Black Lake Boulevard, uh, if you're curious on why that looks like that. As you can tell, there's also other islands as part of this. Now, uh, there are 12 different islands within the city um, that have occurred over time. Moving into proposed changes to the map, um, I'd like to, I think we have six different changes. If you have any questions, please interrupt me. Slide. Uh, just a question on that. Sure. Uh, what is that big island in the middle of the city there? Uh, this is, well, in a week, call it Glenwood. Uh, the southern portion is the Glenwood development, this yellow area. And then there are additional properties along uh, uh, Little Rock. And then on the north side of the lake is other properties that are sort of connected through Personal Creek. Uh, so over time, those areas were left out of annexations for a variety of reasons. Uh, but now that's that's the giant island. And that giant and that also is not served by sewer. Is that correct? That is correct. It is not served by sewer, and I I'm not sure. I don't think it's served by city water, uh, but I I'm not sure about that. Thank you. So. Excuse me. Why, why do those exist? I mean, I just intuitively. <laughs> it seems I, I haven't had the 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 my uh, colleague who handles our internal annexations for the past twenty two years uh, has done thirty plus annexations, and there are a each of those annexations for a variety of reasons will pick up or not pick up areas in my mind that should have been picked up. You know, somebody objected, somebody knew somebody who knew somebody, and they were taken out of that particular uh, annexation. That's really kind of the story. And that when you multiply that over 30 plus annexations over 30 plus years, uh, that's what happens. Um, as to the individual stories, I'd really have to go back to each of those annexations and do some digging to, to, to relate that exact story. But I think that's what happened. Okay. The first change in the land use designation map that is being proposed is related to a uh, uh, some work that the city and had done in regard to its neighborhood commercial zones uh, within the city and also within our UGA. Uh, we had nine neighborhood commercial nodes within the city and we had three within the urban growth area that we looked at as part of our comprehensive plan amendment process in 2018. The concern that our council had was we had designated these areas originally in the 1990s to develop as local commercial hubs. Uh, so the idea being you would have services and commercial services nearby. So people in these particular areas necessarily wouldn't have to get in the car and go somewhere. What we haven't seen on the ground with the very few exceptions is any kind of development over the 25 years that they had existed both within the city and the UGA. Uh, we had looked at each of those areas and in some cases we proposed some changes and in other cases we left it alone. But the idea was, all right, we thought that we needed to shrink the size of the neighborhood commercial areas to really sort of function and develop as a commercial hub. This is off of Black Lake Belmore Road. And if you're familiar with the area, the parcel here on the very north end is a gas station with a, a mini mart. And then there's also a, a manufactured home park immediately behind it uh, that is on the lake. The parcels across the street, I believe are single family, developed as single family, they're not developed as commercial. And then the area that we have outlined here in red, I don't think these have been, been developed at all, if I recall. Our proposal, and this was something our council wanted to bring to the county as a recommendation, uh, is that we take 
the last the southern two neighborhood commercial parcels out and change it to single family medium uh, to encourage development of the whole area as neighborhood commercial. Um, any questions on that particular one? <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. A similar exercise was done uh, for Center Street. Can I, can I hold you up for a sec? Look like Michael had a hand up. Okay. That's all right. Um, so it looks like that multifamily medium uh, parcel uh, based on the map is a place called Timberlane Mobile Estates. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, and, if and when uh, that parcel were to be considered for uh, as part of uh, integration into the city, would that have to be rezoned into the mobile home park zoning that we have for the rest of the city or would it remain multifamily medium? That would be a question for us to discuss with the owner of that property. Um, we don't have an automatic change if, if something becomes an annexation. There's a couple things like about that. Number one, uh, as part of our recent annexation agreements with the county, there is a one year moratorium on any zoning or land use changes. So if something comes into the city as single family, for example, it will stay single family for at least a year before any action is taken. Since we've, uh, uh, for the county commissioners, I, our, our planning commissioners, I, a little background, the city of Tumwater is unusual in the fact that we have a manufactured home park zone which means uh, for the majority of the manufactured home parks within the city, uh, they have their own zoning that is intended to allow for manufactured home parks and not much else. Uh, the intent of the zone, and it's been upheld by the state uh, growth management board was to protect multi uh, mobile homes, manufactured home parks from redeveloping and changing and losing, you know, for, for us losing affordable housing. Uh, we have about a thousand such units uh, within the city. So that, that's an important thing for us. We haven't had an issue yet where we've annexed something uh, or annexed a manufactured home park and then had to decide what to do about it. I don't think there's not an automatic trigger that we would have to change it. Uh, my preference would be that we would work with the landowner to whatever they choose to do, uh, we'll work with them for that. Uh, but we do recognize that the purpose of our manufactured homes park is really to, to protect existing manufactured home parks. Gotcha. So it would be sort of up to the imperative of the property owner in a situation like that. Yeah, I don't think we haven't really had that tested. And I don't think from our perspective, it makes sense to not work with the landowner on what they would like to do. Makes sense. Thank you. And I'm doing the same thing with that. Uh, commercial those two southern parcels in that commercial area to talk to the current landowners and see how they feel about things mm -hmm. that is certainly something we can do about as part of this process um, i just want to first of all make sure that the that if the commissions are okay with this and reaching out to these people more than happy to do that I personally think anytime that you change somebody's zoning that having a direct conversation with them about that would be um, prudent. Mm -hmm. I agree. So my proposal is we will send out notices as we go through these to those properties we're proposing for changes uh, after this meeting and before our next meeting. So those property owners will have a chance to uh, ask questions or attend the next meeting and definitely attend the hearing where this will be discussed. The next proposed amendment uh, is another one related to the city's 2018 neighbor commercial changes. Uh, this is on 83rd and center, uh, just next to the airport. Uh, this is an area that's developed as a campsite as well as a, uh, a gas station. Um, it is surrounded to the north is that light area, light gray area is uh, light industry um, in the city. And then next to it in the colored areas are actually the county. So multifamily medium and light industry to the east. Uh, the recommendation that the, our council had to send to the city, uh, excuse me, send to the county was that this be changed from neighbor commercial to general commercial. 
uh, because really the, the, the existing land uses on the site plus the surrounding land uses made it more appropriate for general commercial than neighborhood commercial. Uh, we didn't see you know, a neighborhood node next, uh, growing up around this surrounded mostly by residential. It's really in a transition area and its existing uses are much more general commercial than neighborhood commercial. The third amendment is related to uh, the city getting rid of the business park uh, land designation and zone uh, in 2017. Uh, it was intended to be an area where um, the, the business park was intended to be uh, like a light industrial area with enhancements, uh, meaning more you know, separation between uses, better screening, all of those kinds of things. However, we have discovered that our landscaping code and other design regulations really do that for us. So we don't need to have another industrial zone uh, for this. Now, the only area left that is currently a business park is in the county UGA, and it's this particular parcel in red here. Uh, our proposal is to change this from business park to light industrial. And again, as, as, was, as we will do for all of these parcels, we will reach out again to the owner uh, to let them know that that's what's being proposed. Um, to the south is light industrial and to the north is general commercial and it's along uh, the I-5 corridor. Access What's to the property right now. I'm sorry? Is that property currently developed to, to some activity right now? No, I believe if you look at an aerial photo, it's, it's pretty covered with, with woodland. And my question when I was taking a look at this this morning was, uh, is I don't think there's access, developed access to the parcel. Uh, either. So if anything happens, it would probably have to come from the north or the south to, to have development occur on here. Well, the, oh, okay. Then, then I'm sort of, why are we even addressing that one at this time then? I, if for our purposes, we are, we're cleaning up the map. We're getting rid of some extra zones that don't exist within the city, but do exist wow. within the county UGA. Okay, thanks. Brad, do you Sorry. Thurston County doesn't seem to have a very good uh, planning process for looking at future roads and where things go. Um, I noticed in the last proposal you had Center Street dead ends at 83rd and there's, you know, do you have any plan with the city on uh, set asides for future roads? Like in my mind, Center Street should be planned to go straight on through down to the next main east-west road. And the county doesn't do a, a job of that at all. They dead end main roads into uh, housing developments and whatnot. Does City of Tumwater look at that? I don't know in this particular case if our transportation plan extended and looked at what was happening in our UGA but I, I, will, I will check that and, and get back to you. I think I understand the perspective of wanting to have a connection between 83rd and 93rd to the south uh, for a variety of reasons, taking you know, traffic off of the adjacent roads and that kind of thing. My only other thought would be it would cross some critical areas by, if it's built and that's that high groundwater area immediately to the south that's off the map to the south. Uh, but let me do some research and, and try to answer that question. The next amendment is for the enclave at Deschutes River. Uh, this is was uh, um, the uh, how this arose was we have a developer who's in right now with the uh, county developing the area in yellow uh, between Old Highway 99 and the green area here as a single family uh, subdivision. And there are a, um, <clears throat> there's a portion of the property uh, that is on the top of the slope, which is the top of the slope is the curve line uh, that is also zoned as open space. And the really, the intent of the open space zone was to protect in this particular area, the, the, the Deschutes River uh, floodplain uh, area where the river will go back and forth. And I think it was originally 
I think they followed the, uh, uh, I'm not sure what they followed when they drew the line originally, probably a parcel line, but it doesn't follow the top of the slope, which is really the, the real natural transition between a developed area and an area that's protected as open space. And so county and city staff have reviewed this together. We think it's okay for this little sliver of, of area in red uh, to change from open space to single family low. Uh, it's supported by the, uh, the, the shoreline management plan of the county uh, and, it, and it makes sense from a practical standpoint. The last area that we're looking at is another area where there is a, a land use designation or a zone district in the county that doesn't exist in the city. Uh, and this is the area, uh, this is 73rd and Little Rock. <clears throat> and it is, it is currently called uh, commercial development. Uh, we don't have a, a designation like that. We have general commercial mixed use and, and some other zones, but not this particular one. Um, our proposal as part of the joint plan amendment process is to uh, change this com from commercial development to mixed use. Uh, within the city of Tumwater, immediately to the north on Tumwater Boulevard, 73rd and Little Rock, we have a, a node of uh, uh, mixed use development there. Um, we're open also to considering this area potentially as general commercial, as it would match the area immediately uh, to the east as well. But for our purposes, there is nothing, we don't have a commercial development zone that we can apply this to. Um, I believe that's all, okay. That is all the map changes. Um, are there any questions on those map changes so far? Okay. All right. Are now back on um, slide 30, the, um, the enclave at Deschutes. Okay. Um, is this one of the areas where there, there or, or how difficult is it to get utilities, sewer, water, and so on? Uh, into that area if it were to change to single family low? Um, I, it shouldn't be difficult. The problem is I don't know necessarily where the sewer and water are currently in old 99. I I'm, I'm, we have developments. This is Bradbury in the city. I know it's down to Bradbury. What I don't remember is how far down old 99 it goes, uh, but it's definitely near. Um, because we're developing those gray areas are, are new developments within the city. Okay. So the airport hazard overlay zone is a zone that the city has adopted uh, to basically ensure that we don't put land uses and people and operations and things like that under the flight paths. And the flight paths are the current flight paths for the airport. This is not a proposed uh, expansion of the airport. The port has not indicated to us that they are wanting to expand. Uh, this is basically recognizing that the existing runways, uh, both the east, northeast and the south, <laughs> the north, south and the east, west runways uh, have areas as you're approaching in an airplane where there's a higher likelihood of a potential accident or something happening. And that's really the intent of these areas is to uh, provide an area that, that is protects, um, basically not only, but it protects the people on the ground primarily. So for example, uh, the, each of these numbers reflect a slightly different um, uh, level of protection. So if you are in the immediate area, number one, of, the, of taking off or landing at the airport, this has by far the highest level of protection. Uh, my, if I remember correctly, no buildings whatsoever uh, kind of thing, no permanent you know, facilities, nothing of that nature. And then as you move out, the restrictions become less. So under two, for example, and under four, uh, there are restrictions, like you can't put a school in that area, uh, but you can potentially say put a manufacturing area if you have less than X number of people uh, as part of that. And that's really how these function. And for those who have questions about this, I can definitely refer you to our airport overlay, which 
gives the kind of detail of what kind of uses and why and where, all that. When the, uh, this was originally adopted, uh, the city adopted the full overlay as part of our, our, our process. And that's why these areas in red are currently what we have in the city. Uh, and as an overlay over our land use and our, our zoning, uh, that restricts particular uses in particular areas. The area that's outside of the gray, this white area, this little bit of area here just south of 93rd is really kind of the focus of the joint plan area. And then everything that's outside of that area is really something that would have to be dealt with by the county outside of the joint plan update process. Uh, the, the county, when they adopted uh, their airport hazard uh, zone, they adopted only portions of it and uh, very restricted portions of that. And our recommendation and the recommendation that we've heard from the, the, the Port of Olympia is that it'd be very appropriate for the county to consider the full airport hazard overlay. Again, this on is not- side, uh, uh, on The overlay on the north side in the city of Tumwater, is that already in place? All yes, four, yeah. that all, all of this red area that you see, all the boxes and stuff, that is already in place, yes. All the red area on the gray, but not the red area. I mean, the, it's red at the bottom too, it looks Correct. Like. Yeah okay. yeah. okay. So yeah, there's there's different levels of restrictions, and I think what happened is perhaps in the area that's in that's background is white and red, the the restrictions aren't the same as say the two in the gray in the city, if that makes sense. Right. Um, it, it's not as strict is what the what it really comes down to. Again, this is not driven by a proposal to expand the airport. If the airport expands for any reason, that is another whole issue. Uh, the city definitely has its own opinions about how excited we would be about that, uh, but that's not what we're dealing with here. This is merely recognizing that we have an existing airport and with an existing airport, we're gonna have conflicts uh, with land uses and, the, and if we can avoid uh, avoidable impacts, that would be our preference. Um, We'll definitely, as more questions come up, we can definitely try our best to answer that. Um, the next steps in the process, as I mentioned, uh, we're, staff is proposing a, another joint work session to go over the implementation measures that we're proposing in the joint plan. And then we would look to schedule a joint public hearing with both commissions in May. Um, I mentioned the city council and the board of commissioner process already. And then if you have any questions, you can either contact me, um, Brad Medrud at the city or Leah Davis. Uh, anything that I, any questions I receive on the joint plan, I'll be sure to copy Leah and vice versa. So we're, we're both uh, uh, answering the same level of questions. Uh, it looks like I have some questions and things to address. As I mentioned, uh, if the commissions are okay with the proposed changes in terms of the scope of those changes, uh, I will reach out and um, work with uh, Leah to notify the owners of what's being proposed so they have an opportunity to, to come in and talk with the commissions. Uh, I will do some research on uh, whether our city transportation plan takes into account extensions into the UGA uh, for like things like Center Street. And I think I had one other request from Elizabeth to expand our, our table for land uses. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. And if there are any questions outside of the presentation or anything else that you would like staff to look at before our next meeting, uh, I'd be happy to hear that. Well, Leah and Jennifer, I'm not sure whom, but uh, are, are we gonna be looking at the uh, airport hazard overlay that's outside of the urban growth area? Yes, we would like to address that at this time because we'd like to expand that, that safety zone for the airport. So we would like to um, put the overlay over that um, extension that goes beyond the UGA. And that zone, the underlying zone wouldn't change and that would be rural, residential, one dwelling per 10 acres. No, none of that would change. And there's that, as Brad pointed out, that little strip of land it's in the UGA, which is light industrial. 
Does that answer your question? I think you would, I guess what you're saying is the existing zoning for the for that hazard area is already acceptable for the, the hazard that's there. Is that right? And you just draw the line on it. That's exactly right. Change. And it and it would potentially limit in the future some development in that area. Right now there wouldn't be any limitations because it is a um, rural residential one dwelling per 10 acres. So it can't be developed anyway to a more dense um, industrial or commercial or residential zone. So it, it, it's at its maximum density at this point. So this would more affect uh, any upzonings in the future then? If That's was... correct. Okay. Process-wise, Leah, is the op is the idea that we'll do another follow-up doodle poll for all of the commissioners to find a next follow-up work session date that folks can come to, much like this. Um, and it will probably mean a couple extra meetings in your future in April and May, just to warn you and put that on your calendar. But um, we'll be sending that out um, following this meeting if folks seem amenable to that. So I was thinking, I was looking at, I was looking at Brad's uh, timetable or what he was thinking. He was considering trying to get this to county commissioners by June. Uh, actually to the, the city council by June. So it would, the planning commission would, our schedule would call for a public hearing with the planning commissions in May. Uh, and then it would go to our city council for their review and a recommendation from them to the county board of commissioners by the middle of summer. So it seems like what I'm kind of thinking is to do the public hearing to get the notice out, we need to kind of set a date for that pretty quick. Do we have that time, Jennifer? Um, at your next, um, I think there's an April time frame where we'll have a follow-up work session and it's at that follow-up work session where we'll be asking you to set a joint public hearing um, so we'll have to do some research ahead of time to see when dates might be available for that for everyone. But that would be the, I think at the next meeting, um, we'll be able to set that public hearing if all is going smoothly um, for both of you to hold a joint hearing in May. And then the recommendation can come um, from hopefully a joint recommendation uh, after that public hearing that can be forwarded to the Board of County Commissioners. So will the Thurston County Planning Commission, will they have a separate meeting just amongst ourselves where we can discuss this and possibly bring questions again to the group? We can, we can certainly put on your regular agenda um, for your regular meetings, uh, time for you to have questions just between you and staff. Um, and then you can do that in between now and when we have the next joint work session with the city of Tumwater or even subsequent to that next joint work session. So that's definitely a possibility. So we can build that into your regular meeting agenda. It just seems like we're, we're kind of on a good pretty strict time frame here and I just wanna make sure we get it all done. Is there any thoughts from anybody else out there about timing or any other questions for Brad and Leah? That timing does sound ambitious. Yeah, as we approach summer and, and a lot of plans and whatnot, planning is going to be important for dates to get people. Let's think positive, guys. We got this. <laughs> Love that, Jim. Yeah, there'll be some doodle polls in your near future. Okay. So uh, thank you, Tumwater, for showing up. We appreciate seeing all you guys. Uh, it's nice to see some new faces and a couple of old. Um, and I'm guessing if there's nothing else, we are adjourned. Okay. Thanks, guys. Everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Great presentation, Brad. Absolutely. Thank